Hey guys, there, Softtech here, and today we are going to be doing an unboxing. Well, three unboxings, I guess. So let's get right down to it. I've got several packages here. A couple from Brill, or one from Brill Armory, one from Clandestine Airsoft, another and another one from Evike. And this is all for customer work. So this isn't for my personal. Uh, this isn't an add-on for my personal collection or parts for any builds I'm doing. It is just unboxings for parts I've ordered and all kinds of stuff like that. And a ton of people uh, request unboxings so, unboxings, so I was like, eh, why not? So let's get down to it. So the first one we're going to open up is one from Clandestine Airsoft. It's a little small package here. So let's get down to it. So usually like these white packages here, I have a ton of trouble opening them because unlike these yellowish packages, uh, that rip away super easily, this one just doesn't. So it's going to take a lot of work. Yep, see, it just tears away. All right, so trusty knife. All right, a bit unorthodox with the knife use, but whatever. All right, so little invoice, don't need that, that doesn't matter. So the first thing is a Lonex M4 hop-up chamber. I'm doing R-hop drop-in units for people, which includes like a Lonex chamber, Lonex 70 degree bucking, a ZCI 6.02 barrel of your choice, you know, lengthwise, and uh, R-hop. So this is for a customer build right here. So Lonex M4 hop-up chamber, probably my favorite hop-up chamber on the market. Uh, Prometheus is really good too, but I like uh, Lonex a lot. Lonex 70 degree bucking right there. Those are really good for high FPS builds and R-hop. I tend to find that uh, with high FPS builds, you tend to have like a jamming effect when you use heavy BBs and then a weak bucking, like a 50 degree bucking or a 40 degree bucking. It can sometimes bend and uh, jam up and I don't like those buckings. Plus I think I get better performance out of uh, higher stiffness buckings. So this is a package from Brill Armory. And this is a customer stuff as well. First thing is a Garter SP100 spring. Um, what I like about Garter springs is the packages smell really good, probably kill a couple brain cells, but they smell really good in the process. And they're always on point. I think I've had like one Garter spring out of the you know dozens I've used that has ever had an issue. And I'm pretty sure even that single spring I had was a severe outlier. So this is an SP100, which uh, if you guys know the difference between SP and M ratings in springs, SP is basically rated with a .25, and M100 or M, M series springs are rated with a .20 gram BB. So this is SP100, so uh, that's a different rating from an M100. But it's, it's basically an M110, basically, if you want to get that thought process in your head. I should make a video on the differences between the two, so future video. Uh, let's see here. And again, the invoice, don't need. Oh, yeah. Super, super duper short uh, ZCI barrel. I think this is a 229 barrel. It's it's really, really short. And so um, this is one that's going to be R hop. And that's going to be pretty interesting because uh, short barrel R hops, they can do funky things. Um, I've just noticed that four, 455 millimeter barrels are fantastic being R hopped. 363 is good. 300 millimeters is good. I think when you get really below that, you kind of run into some issues. But uh, it should still be an improvement regardless, just not as good of an improvement as a longer barrel R-hop would be. So, R-hop. And let's see. Uh, ZCI 16 TPA motor. I better be careful not to get this one close to the camera or my computer. But, uh, yeah, well, they changed the end belt design. Huh, interesting. Anyway, 16 TPA motors, uh, the people call them high torque, but they're really a balanced motor. Uh, really, 22 TPA plus is should be considered torque. Anything below 16 TPA should be considered speed. 16 to 22 should probably be balance, but that's a debate in the teching community. Uh, these motors are really, really strong, and uh, the 16 TPA can pull an M190 probably. So it can easily do it on a DSG. Let's see what else we got. Hey, uh, this is a 316th, if I remember correctly, neoprene buffer pad. I like neoprene a lot more than I like sorbothane. With the gearbox shells getting tougher and tougher, it's kind of pointless to start using sorbothane builds because back when we started using sorbothane, it was necessary because gearbox shells were weaker and we were really getting into that uh, high stress build setups. So neoprene does two things, um, corrects angle of engagement and it'll also help dampering a bit. 
but sorbothane dampers too much, so it kind of doesn't reset in time. And that's a video, I think I've actually made a video on that. I think it's sorbothane versus faucet washer. Neoprene is kind of in between faucet washer and sorbothane. It's a little bit stiffer than sorbothane, but not as stiff as faucet washer. So that's why I like this stuff. And let's see, oh, we have SHS 8mm bushings. Now, I have all these parts here, you're probably wondering, where's the gun at? So, let's go get the gun. So, here is the gun. Um, the dress and stuff is on the other side, so don't try looking for it. Um, anyway, so, this is a gun for a customer build. This is, uh, well, I'll just open it up. Got my trusty knife. So, no. I really need to get into knives, knives more than I already am. But I have too many hobbies, too many expensive hobbies. So, probably shouldn't quite yet. Alright. I always like thought it was funny that Evike and Airsoft GI, like when they ship you stuff, it's like one piece of tape across the top. I've never had an issue with it, but whenever I ship guns, I usually ship like with one piece of tape across the top and then like a couple down the center. So, alright. So, we'll go over the small things first before we go over the big thing. Got a Lone Nex chamber here, another one. This is for the gun itself, so you know it's at least M4, you know, something along the M4 lines now, slash M16. So, Lone Nex M4 hop up chamber. What else do we got? Oh, invoice. Don't need to see that. And this one's going to give it away. This is the Ares electronic programmer for the Amoeba. So, I guess you know what that means. The gun is an Amoeba. I think this is the, let's see here, the AM013 Desert Color, I guess that's what it is. Uh, let's open it up, get a first impressions kind of thing going. So, Aries for me has always been odd. They've always kind of sat in a place where it was kind of like, they're, they're an expensive set of guns, but they're not super good in my experience. Um, but they do, they do make unique guns. So. That's one of the things about them, is that they make unique guns, but I don't think they make the greatest guns in the world. Um, if you know anything about Elite Force, some of their guns are made by Ares. Some of them are made by BFC, so, um, but some of them are made by Ares. So here you get this, I guess, instruction manual. Oh, it's a whole teardown manual. That's kind of cool. Whew. Yeah, but Ares is one of those companies that pays a lot of attention to uh, manuals and things that are just sort of like bonuses, but not really what you're looking for. Like, you're not buying this thing for the manual, you're buying this thing because it's the Amoeba, it's completely different. So, there's that. And, magazine, put that off to the side for now. It feels really cheap, like super cheap. Uh, rails, oh, it comes with a black flash hider, that's nice. I was going to spray paint it, but I guess I don't have to. And, uh, rails, those are plastic. Yeah, those are plastic. It's in a bag. Unjamming rod, always nifty. I have a million of these, but never have too many. And then the gun itself. So yeah, that's cool. Um, let's put the box aside. So yeah, here's the gun itself. Um, I can't get it all on screen. I guess I could. Uh, let's see here. Oh, cool. Stock pops out. Anyway, this is the Ares Amoeba, the AM013DE. So the DE stands for uh, Desert Tan, I guess. Comes with a little thing here. Uh, item number, Amoeba 013DE. Muzzle velocity, 127.6 meters per second. What is that, like 410 FPS? I don't know. 1.61 joules, so yeah, like 410, 415 FPS. It, well, I was even chronoed at a specific temperature, like 25 degrees Celsius. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, and it was done 16, 12, 2016. That'd be like, what, December 16th? <sighs> All right, yeah, um, first impressions. Um, the grip feels kind of cheap, very lightweight, kind of like, kind of fakey feeling. Um, I like the magazine release. It's really different. You can, really different magazine release. Let's see how well the mag fits in. Lots of mag wobble, but that's not unusual. So, there's that disgusting orange flash hider. I guess that just... Yeah, that comes right off. Probably glued on there, I'll have to figure that out. Um, comes with these like finger stops here. So like when you do this, I guess. 
but uh, I don't know anyone who actually shoots like that in airsoft. I know people do in real life, but this is airsoft. I try to do this sometimes because it's good form whenever, whenever I play airsoft, but I, I never stick to it. I always end up doing something like this, and uh, that's just not okay, but whatever. Um, let's see. Yep, it's got the micro switch kind of setup in it where it's not the standard trigger. I actually, this has a you know, fire control setup in it, but I don't know much about them, I'll be completely honest. I just, I stay out of Ares normally because I just, I don't consider them guns worthy of a lot of time. But the Amoeba has a lot of good recommendations from, from some text that I know. So I guess we got some flip up sights right here. They seem like they're in really odd positions, but I guess that's just because this one has to be a little bit further back so that you can put your hand here, but that just still seems really odd to me. Bunch of stickers, you know, warning signs made in China stuff. Oh well, stock's a little wobbly, but that's completely within the bounds of you know, normal. So let's see here. Battery compartment, tiny to be expected. Let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. Very tiny as expected though, but that's just, that's life. Super tiny battery compartment. Probably gonna barely fit a big 11 one volt. So I thought this was kind of cool, but whenever you press this, it kind of like shoots out. That's really neat. So it has some tension to it. Um, you know, that's really all I can think of right top of the right off top of my hat, or right off top of my head, <laughs> about this gun. Um, the rail is metal. That's nice. The body is plastic or some sort of polymer. The sides are plastic. I really kind of wish those were metal. Uh, let's see. There's only one optic on it, and. Doesn't does it adjust? I don't think it adjusts at all, but whatever. I don't I don't know anybody who adjusts their iron sights. And I guess those rails that it came with I can put all over the place if I wanted to, but it's a customer gun, not even mine, so we'll let him do it. But yeah, that's uh pretty cool. I've always wanted to get a hold of one of these guns. I know uh Bridgman Underground, the store I work for occasionally, uh they do uh they have an Aries Amoeba there. And it's all in black, and it was really, really cool to mess around with, but, like, I never really did anything with it. And I think it was, like, partially non-working, so, like, it would it would cycle, but it was, like, 200 FPS, so it was completely unusable. Um, but that's about it, so. That's all, that's, I have a little bit of experience with Ares other than that. Uh, I've worked on one of the G36s, and that was a big pain in the butt because I dropped the low next gearbox shell in. A lot of misalignment there, but I fixed it. And that's, a, and then, like, some Elite Force guns here and there, but that's really about all I've done with Ares. Um, so yeah, that's really all there is to it for this unboxing video. I unboxed some stuff from Brill, Clandestine Airsoft, and then from Evike itself. Uh, nothing wrong with how Evike packed their stuff for this one. Uh, I've, I've rarely had an issue with Evike, and when I do have issues, they always fix them, which is really great. But yeah, uh, that's really all there is to this video. Alright, well I hope you guys like this video. This is just a quick unboxing video, probably going to be around 10 minutes totally when it's edited and all that stuff. But uh, tell me how you guys like this. If you guys like this video, then I can start doing more unboxing videos where I unbox stuff. Like I order parts all the time, and uh, if I uh, if I get a part in, I can just talk about it for a split second, just give my quick thoughts on it, and move on and unbox some other stuff. And then maybe later on, I can make a more extensive video on a particular part or even gun. Uh, this Ares Amoeba build. If you guys are wondering anything about it, uh, it's just going to be a simple 16 TPA. 20-25 uh, RPS build on an 1 volt, switching it over to Dean's, doing a flat hop installation on it, putting the uh, low X hop-up chamber in it, doing kind of stuff like that. Very basic build. Uh, the customer didn't want a ton done, but wanted it to be a little bit better than what it currently is. The rate of fire on these things is probably about 16-17 rounds a second on an 1 volt, which isn't super great. Uh, what's really cool is that the trigger resets, or it uh, it has this uh, it has a setup similar to BTC, Chimeras, Inspectors, and Titan Vets, where uh, you pull the trigger and it'll always complete the cycle, so it doesn't half cycle, and that's always nice. But yeah, like I said, that's going to have to do it for this video. Just a simple unboxing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more, tell me below in the comments. And if you want to see something special that I haven't done yet, tell me below in the comments, and I'll get right down to it. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video of whatever the heck I'm doing. Stay tuned, Tex.